We just permanently passed the climate change tipping point. Let that sink in. So Vice reports, we've officially pushed atmospheric carbon level levels past their dreaded 400 parts per million permanently. According to a blog post last Friday from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, it already seems safe to conclude that we won't be seeing a monthly value below 400 parts per million this year or ever again for the indefinite future. Their findings are based on weekly observations of carbon dioxide at Hawaii's uh, Mauna Loa Observatory, where climate scientists have been measuring CO2 levels since 1958. They continue, what's so terrifying about this number, for several years now, scientists have been warning us that if atmospheric carbon were allowed to surpass 400 parts per million, it would mark a serious tipping point into some unstoppable climate ramifications. So this is what, you know, has been called the dreaded uh, runaway greenhouse effect. So there's no, like, you can't put the genie back in the bottle at a certain point, and that's where we're at right now. Now, all the downsides of climate change, they seem inevitable. You're going to have the continued uh, sea level rise. You know, over time, you could say goodbye to very well-known cities. It's New Orleans, for example, already below sea level. I was watching a great documentary on it the other day on the Weather Channel where they're talking about you know, the levee system and how much they could take, and it's just a matter of time until the next big one hits. It's just a matter of time until the next one that's way bigger than Katrina hits. I mean, really think about that. One that's bigger and stronger than Katrina? You know the damage Katrina did. We're talking about way worse than that? It, you almost can't wrap your mind around it. Then obviously you have uh, different extinctions occur, and they speed up as a result of this. That's one that I haven't really thought about and considered much. And then obviously you have massive, massive effects on the food chain, which, uh, on, the, uh, on, yeah, the food chain. You're going to have gigantic effects on the food chain, which is, is going to affect the price of your, uh, your food when you go to the store. There's going to be wars over water in the third world where, hey, we're running out of water. What do you do? Well, you know what humans do when there's scarce resources and it's something that's needed. They go at it, man. So people don't understand. Never mind also the increased wildfires and natural disasters. I mean, I, I get tweets all the time. People, Somebody said it just this week. Uh, are you going to cover these, like, out-of-control wildfires that are happening? Apparently, you know, there are many people who their lives have been directly affected by it. And they're like, dude, like, this, our live, life is ruined as a result of this. Like, all these things, the trillions of dollars in economic consequences as a result of this. <laughs> this is why Bernie Sanders said we need to treat it like a World War II level threat. We just can't keep burning fossil fuels like we're burning them. We have to immediately try to transition and go to green technology, renewable technology. It's a matter of necessity. I don't think people really get that. You know, and then there's also the question of even if you were to like if we woke up tomorrow and there was just no more carbon emissions, just none. That's it. Gone. It, there would still be the the residual effects of what we've already put in there in, into the atmosphere. And what would happen? I don't know. You have to talk to the scientists about that. And I don't think it'd be rainbows and puppies. So. I remember when we covered the story the first time we passed 400 parts per million. Where we were like, that hasn't happened. So, we covered that story. That was a while back. Now they're saying, we will permanently be over that. Oh, what have we done, man? What have we done?